<laughs> it's really like again we're we're wrapping up our friday for having you guys lead and i just wanted to put you guys in leadership positions again so that it's not always just me but we get the angst the anxiety the whatever you know i'm not expecting can you guys about, hear me yeah i can hear you i was gonna talk is it or is it just yeah. the two ladies my internet's you, unstable Steven? you guys there oh, okay. yeah can you hear us and jermaine yeah and jermaine all right two ladies two fellas <laughs> So I was gonna, I was gonna talk about letting go, and then I changed my mind because I just went to see my parents, and they're Let's go. mom's gonna be eighty-two, and dad's gonna be eighty-five. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, it's basically two things. It's like time for self and mindset, because they, I'll tell you how they go together in my mind. Okay, so it's important to take time for yourself because we live in a, we live in a constant state of you know like go 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 you have to make a thousand calls to get 10 people you have to post this many times you have to do this no stopping and it's it's not what it's supposed to be because that a is bad for your health mentally and physically and b just it's too exhausting and so my broker used to he said used to say he's changed his mind since then but he used to always say i don't take vacations and i would be really leery of someone that said that because do you as an individual want to work with people who are all business, you know? And so um, he's, he has changed his mind since then, but, it, but it, it's important to do that for the balance. And then you can't trick time back. Steven, you, you just learn that, you know, with your dad, you know, going to see him and taking him out to the hospital. You got that, you got that time. You, you wouldn't have gotten that time had you not taken that time. I mean, that's obvious, right? But so, and then people, and we talked about David Goggins a bunch. He wrote that book, You Can't Hurt Me. Yeah. And then all I hear in that statement is, you can hurt him. And he his, has been hurt. And his story is phenomenal for sure. But there's a, there's a guy I like to listen to. His name's Lewis House, H-O-W-E-S. He's got a great podcast. He interviews all kinds of cool people. And he was, taught, he was interviewing David Goggins and he said, he had said something to David Goggins to the effect of, you know, you never smile and you don't joke around. And, David Goggins was like, I don't need to. Yeah. And he's the kind of guy that is like, won't take anything, any kind right. of, he, he thinks it's weakness, you know, things like that. And I, so this is how mindset's going to come into it because when you take time for yourself, whether it's two minutes, two days a week, one day a month, whatever it is, it helps you reset. So whether it's meditation or reading or taking a walk or writing or taking a vacation, uh, competing in sports. So, so the reason why I'm not teaching anymore, and this is what's interesting. So, so part of that is in time for yourself is taking chances because what do you want your life to be? Who do you want to present yourself to the world as? Right. So I was teaching and I started the Highland games, which if you guys don't know what it is, look it up. It's incredible. It's amazing. I throw things that look like telephone poles. It's a bunch of heavy weights and stuff. And I'm actually second in the world in my age group. And it's not only healthy for my mind, it's healthy for my body. And I do other things and people are like, oh, well, you need to come to this meeting. You know, it's just like you taking time off for the Highland Games. And I'm like, no, it's not. It's not the same at all. The Highland Games is for me. It's not for anybody else. And so I was teaching and I taught 16 years and I got a master's in administration and I was miserable. I was not making any money. I didn't have time for myself. I didn't have time for anybody else. And I, and I didn't have the money to do it anyway. And so I decided I just started the Highland Games my last year of teaching. And I thought, I got to I got to do something different. And so I was scared to death. And all I heard from people was uh, most realtors quit in the first two or three years. And, you know, uh, you have to have six months money saved up. And I'm like, OK, thanks for that. Thanks for that. But I'm also the kind of person that's like, OK, well, you know what? I'm going to prove you wrong. So guess what? I'm going to do it. <laughs> And I'm going to be really fucking good at it, you know? And so I, I wanted to take more time because it's important. It's important to live your life. It's important to spend time with those you love because you don't get that time back. Yeah. And if you never take a chance, you never know, right? So the thing is to realize that people are looking at you and they want to see you for you, that they don't want to see somebody that's all business. Oh, that, that, that who gives a shit if you work 15 hours a day? Nobody, nobody. Somebody else is like, that's great. I'm over here in, in Mexico taking vacation with my family. So people want to see you for you. They want to see you 
on your vacations. They want to see the things that you like to do. They want to see you as a person, not just a business person, right? So then part of that is when I used to be a teacher is your words are very powerful. So words to self and words to others. So when you're hearing things from other people, oh, most realtors quit in the first two or three years. You have to have six months money saved up. That doesn't help anybody. So you have to have that, you have to have that steadfast mindset and tell yourself, like when I was a teacher, teaching high school, I used to tell the students, your words are very powerful. If you're walking around saying, I'm ugly, I'm stupid, I'm fat, I don't have any friends, what is your life going to be like? So if you listen to everybody else and all these people that are like, you have to go, 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 and you're going to fail and you're going to do this, and you can't take time off, you're going to feel that stress. So you have to, you have to just change that mindset and tell yourself. So I would say, you know, like repeat after me, I am amazing. I can do anything. I live in abundance. Okay. And, I, and I'm not going to apologize for taking time off. I'm not, and I'm not going to let anybody think that I don't work just as hard because I don't want to spend time with my parents that I don't know who are going to be around that long. Right. So I'm almost done here. So to me, those kind of go together and then find things for you that will help motivate you to keep you going. Okay. So I decided I used to get stressed because people were like, you have to post this many times. You have to do this, 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 this. And I, I couldn't keep up. And Steve and I talked to you about that a couple of times. I'm not going to do it anymore. I'm not going to do it anymore because I'm going to be authentically me. And that's what you guys need to do. Because when, when you are true to yourself, you're true to others and you're a leader, you're a leader, whether you know it or not. And that leading by example is the best type of example because someone can look at you and go, you know what? They work really hard, but they also, their family's important. Their friends are important. You got to make the time. So I've got this guy's name, Sit Squatch. Sit right. Squatch. Sit he's, Squatch. On Instagram. He's, on, he's on Instagram. Go follow him. So I think about that. He, he actually helps me because I, I, I don't, I haven't been posting as much, but I'm getting back into it. He's all about kindness, positivity, fun, love. And I post as I'm him, right? And I tag myself, which is really cool. Because then if someone's like, who's this Katie Horgan, you know, I can go see me. <laughs> and so I, this helps me because I think, okay, what would Sit Squatch say? What's a positive thing? And it turns into like a PSA sometimes because I, I posted him with um, like this paddle cactus one time. And I, I talked about the benefits of paddle cactuses and, you know, jams and jellies and whatnot. And, and it's just really fun. And then I also have... There's an app called I Am, and I have it send me affirmations throughout the day. So I'm thinking about it, and this is really, really good, Stephen, all this stuff that we've been talking about, because, you know, last words here, it, taking time for yourself is really important. Speaking those powerful, positive words to yourself is very important, and also to others. So if somebody else is telling you, I, I want to quit this and I want to try this, think about your words before you say it. Don't tell them, well, most people quit in the first two years. That's cool, man. I've got you. I support you. I wish you the best of luck. But when someone else says it's you, in retrospect, don't take that to heart. Just prove them wrong. Prove them wrong, right? Because that's it. We're, we're here, we're here, we're here to, to enjoy life. We need to live to work, not work to live. So, so yeah, I hope that all kind of went together. That's it. Boom. <laughs> I mean, it, there's there's a lot in there because of how many things you're involved in and how many pieces you're yeah. intertwining, right? Which is normal. <clears throat> so I kind of wanted to to um, thread those together so that people can also understand because I know you, right? And I met Sid Squatch right when we were in in. Uh, you did. Palm Springs. Palm Springs. So, yeah. Right. Um, so first things first, David Goggins, right? I, I listened to the audiobook version of it and I was both amazed and supremely turned off. I was amazed because right. I was like, holy shit, how much can the body endure? And I was supremely turned off because this guy is just living his life against, against the world, period. And mentally just trying to prove his father wrong because of what his father put him through in life. And no friends, no nothing, no relationships. It's just, it's just all David. And, um, and that works for David. That's okay. Right. That, and that's, that's the thing, right? Everybody gets to be themselves, but his message to me is dangerous. It's dangerous because it's so isolating. And <clears throat> when I look at that, yep. I mean, again, I marvel at what the human body and the mental condition can do for us. 
but if you're going to turn it all the way up to 100 and leave it on 100, you know, everything burns out at, at some time. Or you just completely isolate and alienate everything about who you are. And to me, you know, like, I like people. He doesn't. <laughs> and it's evident. So, you know, that being said, and then I think the other tough part, while you're... I was going to say, right, you're... Right, and, and, and I think the other tough part while you're working on finding your own balance, Katie, is what we all struggle with because for a big part of uh, my real estate career when I moved to San Diego because of the office that I work at, I literally have been working alongside a savant, you know, for a long time. This He's brilliant. One of the brightest minds I've ever come across. Everything he does, he, he, he does it at, at this like ridiculous enterprise level. And I don't, right? And I wanted to be him for years. And it made me miserable that I didn't have what he has. But at the same time, I was looking away from everything that makes me, me. And so that's the other part, right? Everyone's feeding our heads with, do this, do that, do it this way. This is how it should be done. And it's like, according to who? You know, the experts. Yeah, but who are the experts? You know, what are they doing? And why can't I make it my own? And, <clears throat> and so that's, I mean, that's why I, I, I've also worked to, to, to back off um, in real estate the way I was attacking real estate before. You know, now it's, it's so different the way I go about it because I'm not thinking that I have to fit any image for anyone. I'm just being me. And I will tell you that when you start to kind of cut these cords of how you think you're supposed to be living according to everybody else, and then you come into your own, right? It's, it feels so foreign, it feels so strange. But as you start to recognize, this really is who I am. This is how I'm living my life. This is how I go about things. This is what the world should see. You know, then, then you start getting into your own rhythm and it's, it's liberating. You were gonna say something, Katie? Yeah, I wanted to add something because you're spot on with it, my message that I wanted to get across, but like this, okay, so this is silly. But most people, when I bring them out, they're like, oh, my God, and they get obsessed with them. I, I bring them out. I took them to the Phoenix Open. So this is that mindset thing and just do what you want. And I took them out. And these these little older ladies, like cougars or something. I don't know. She was like, we were taking pictures with them. And she's like, and we're looking at him. Why? And it's just funny to me that people can be so negative, right? Like your words are very powerful. And I'm like, because he's awesome and amazing. And so right. I don't care. Be silly. Be weird. Find something that works for you, just like you said, Stephen. That's the whole message, and I love that. So, yeah. And But you are a silly weirdo, right? Like, when, when we met up in Palm Springs, that's who we got to be, because we're both, like, freaks of nature, you know, ridiculous. It's just dumb. But it's fun, right? And that's the thing. It's like, you don't, you don't have to be this stoic image that everybody, oh, my God, like, oh, Katie's the most powerful, strong, nice, you know. No. Who's Katie? Katie's silly, Katie's powerful, Katie's adventurous, Katie will take risks, Katie's emotional. Like, you know, like I know Katie. And and people don't know who we really are, right? Like I've seen who David Goggins is, but again, to me, he is just a scared little boy trying to prove something to his dad who has literally almost killed himself a billion times because he's push, pushed himself to like dangerous levels of doing things just to accomplish them again great but not for me <laughs> you know and so like as we as we turn this back into where we're at and the lessons learned in all of this it's like don't you can pick and choose the lessons that you want to learn or take from somebody else but make them yours because you can't take everything about someone and make it yours it's impossible there are certain commonalities and then make them yours. And the thing like yesterday I was teaching, um, I taught the uh, uh, a real estate board, three real estate boards in Washington state yesterday after our call. And we had a phenomenal call and I, I, I went half an hour over, which I always do. I always worked over deliver. And, and there was, um, there was some like super, super veterans on there. One was like 20, uh, 30 years. Another one was 37 years. And this lady, 37 years, she goes, you know, I, I come on these, I never show my face, I almost have nothing to ever say, but I'm always looking for one thing to take away. And she's like, I'm so grateful that you reminded us that we have to be the leaders, we have to be the beacon while this market's shifting, right? And, and it's like, 
if we can't do that, if we can't show our identity and our strength and who we are and be authentic and be there to support people, I mean, that's all it's about. We're not, we're not looking for this rock solid leader all the time. We're just looking for real people that are saying real things, you know, that make sense, that gravitate and pull people into our orbit. Not just like, oh yeah, if you want to get everything done and you know, there's no personality in this person, but they'll get it done for you, go there. It's like, no, like we want a connection. And real estate is no different. So yesterday, again, I had, I had an insane, I, I, I'm just letting, I swear to God, this is so bizarre because I'm not chasing real estate the way I used to chase it, which was all just by the numbers, right? So I get a phone call from a buddy of mine who I, I sold a property to, um, in January. And, um, and he calls me up because he had a six month lease with his tenants and they're out. And, and now, um, a model match. And I knew I should have bought the damn unit. I sold it to him for six sixty, and then a model match just went for a million bucks. <laughs> like, and that, that's since January. Right. But whatever. I double ended the property when I sold it to him off market. And he's a great friend of mine. And he called me yesterday and he's like, I just saw the one that sold for a million. And I'm like, you want to sell it, don't you, Kill? And he's like, yeah. I go, well, we don't just want to sell it. We want to do a 1031 exchange, right? Now let's buy two properties. You can maximize everything. Da, 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 da. So finish that. The day before, I met with a great friend of mine that I helped get uh, the sales position job for the number one um, team in the world for EXP. A great friend of mine, um, Isaac. He's no longer in that role because he took something else. But we were just shooting the shit and we're gonna be putting something together. But then I followed up with him yesterday because he had a big meeting two days ago and I wanted to see how it went. And he goes, hey, by the way, um, one of my really good friends who does all this prospecting for uh, people who wanna flip homes, he was giving this one agent three leads a week to go list these properties. And that agent got really wonky and uh, my buddy's looking for a new relationship and I told him about you, right? So it's like all this stuff that we put out there, now there's potentially eight to, I don't know, 12 potential listings I'll get every month, you know? And I have to find out at 9.45 and 25 minutes when I get on a call with this guy what this is really all about, but I'm, I'm sure it'll be great. So I gotta go list this other house. All of a sudden I may have all of this coming, plus all the other referrals that are coming my way and just being me. Like not thinking I have to beat my head against the universe, but remember it takes contact, right? All of these things happen because people know me. It's not an accident, right? It's, I don't show up and say, I don't know my shit. I have to be an expert in my field. But when I show up, I'm an expert in my field being me. And you know, not everybody's going to like me. That's okay. I don't want to work with everybody because I probably don't don't want to. I already know I don't want to. But at the same token, when I was teaching at the real estate board yesterday, the other thing that I was really harping on was identity. What is your damn identity? When people look at Katie, I know what Katie's about. You know, as I've gotten to know Jermaine, I know what Jermaine's about. As I know Joe, I know what Joe's about. As I definitely get to know Camelia, I will know what you are about. I will see you. That's my job, right? And if we know how important it is to be seen for who we really are, and we kick ass at what we do, or we show people that we're learning the necessary steps to kick ass and people respect that, then that's, that's again, that's what people gravitate towards. So like with everything that we're doing, just remember the messages that you're allowing into your brain and filtering through this ridiculous net of all these traps that are built in there because of all this garbage. We haven't like, we haven't cleaned out those webs from our brain yet. Don't be somebody else. Be yourself, gravitate to what makes sense to you. And as we saw when Aaron uh, talked a couple days ago, he's just making phone calls, he's doing one thing and that kid's gonna like kick ass destroy real estate. He will be a number one guy no matter what. Why? He's just doing two things. Staying consistent, right? Getting past his fear of rejection on the phone and then taking names and just doing the one thing in, in follow-up calls. He's being consistent on one thing and getting better at it and taking names and creating a system around it. 60 people in the pipeline. How many people would die for that, right? 
Because these are qualified people, or at least semi-qualified, where, hey, they gave you permission to reach out again. What will that look like in two years? What will this pi pipeline look like? 200, 300, 400, 800? You know, will he be closing 100 deals a year? Probably in two or three years? Yep. How did he do it? Right? He just did one thing. He made phone calls. That's what I want all of you to understand. It's like you don't have to put everything in a blender and try to make everything work and taste, you know, unbelievably incredible. Like, wow, this is the best thing I ever drank. No. Sometimes drinking something that tastes like shit is honestly the healthiest thing for you. And the reason that I say that is because some of you, I can't, I'll never put that in my mouth. It smells so bad. I'm like, you have no idea of the healing properties this will put into your body. And we resist things because of, oh, it smells bad, right? When I teach at the real estate boards here and I ask people, you know, most dials I've ever made, 600 in a day. How many of you like the phone? Zero to one people put up their hand. But yet, when you remove everything, and if you had to make phone calls because your life depended on you, every single person in that damn classroom would make phone calls. Just think about that. We deny ourselves our own greatness because of the bullshit that's in our head. Period. There is no deviating. There is no difference. It's just a stupid story. So that's what I mean. Create your own story. Go after it. Deal with the pain because not everything is just like the first date where it's the rush. Oh, my God. You know, and that's 42 years later. How do you feel in your relationship? Still like the first time you met them? No. Right? Everything's going to change. Everything. But it's yet we want to hang on to these things and go, it's always got to be like this. No, it doesn't. It just has to be a mental mindset of who you are, what you're willing to persevere through, do the things that you actually enjoy. And it might not be phone calls, but you can go door knock, you can go do open houses, you can be a YouTube star. I don't give a shit. Pick what you like, be consistent at it, and you will grow everything. But make sure that people see you, your sit squatch, your story, your this, your passions, your children. Like, that's what people want. That's what I want. I don't want clinical. I don't, I don't want to see like a sterile lab coat kind of person all the time. Like, I don't give a crap about those people. For those who do like those people, that's great. They can work with that person. I don't want them. I don't. I, I don't. And that's the other thing, is be willing to understand you're allowed to say no. And that's power. Saying no is really powerful. I'll tell you that right now. When you can deny somebody, because most people are like, what do you mean? You don't want to work with me? You don't want my listing? I'm like, dude, I don't want your fucking drama. That's what I don't want. So yeah, forget the listing. And that's a powerful thing to do. I'll tell you that right now. It's powerful because now you're in control. And how often, I, honestly, and you, you don't have to answer this to me, but how often do you feel in control of your life or where you're going? And the truth is, it's unfortunate that most people don't. We just feel like we're free falling and it causes panic and we live in that panic and it screws everything up. And then we want to be somebody else because somebody else is doing it better than us. And we try to do it that way. And it's so not authentic. And then we feel even more miserable. And then we say, but I tried. And you're like, did you? Really? Come on. And I'm a hard ass. When I see that stuff, I am not going to say, oh, that's so nice. I see your effort. That's wonderful that you failed. This is lovely. Like, why have you been doing that for eight months? Like, what the hell is wrong with you? Come on. Let's do it different. You know you're failing yourself, but you're keeping this here. Why? So people can feel sorry for you and make it look like you're trying? Like, come on. Just go be you, man. Everybody will love it and or respect it. And that's what we're looking for, right? And at the same time, once you do it long enough and you put your own authentic and leadership pants on and you know what that feels like to be the boss, but not the boss in a way where you're bossy, right? But you're the leader. And people gravitate towards that. And, you know, for me, that, that's what it's all about because I want to enjoy my surroundings. I want to enjoy who I'm working with. I want to enjoy what I'm putting out as far as content in the world, right? Like my strengths are not in social media and all that stuff. So that's why I have Joe, right? And I just tell Joe, Joe, just tell me what to do and I will get it done immediately. And he sends me these texts to, hey, I need a video on this. Boom. You know, I sent it to him in like two minutes. But 
I know where I can't be playing. And every time I tried to take control of my social media and stuff like that, I failed miserably because it's not what I want to be doing. That's not, that's not my jam at all. I'm, it's not that I'm private or reserved. I just, I'm like, I'm not thinking about putting out this image into the world. I'm not, that, that's just me, you know, uh, I'm, I'm not, that, that's not what fulfills me, but I understand it's necessary. If we want to grow an audience, if we want to truly show who we are, then we have to push things out there. But whatever gets pushed out there, again, should be a true reflection of you. And people will see those things and they'll lean in, right? Oh my God, I feel I know you. Or if you post something that's kind of traumatic in your life, people reach out that are strangers because people gravitate to honesty and vulnerability and the truth. And that's all I'm saying. It's like, go out there, change your story, understand no one's gonna kill you if you post something that is truly you, but maybe they don't like. And if they say something and that just all of a sudden goes, oh my God, I put that out there and somebody said that was so bad and, and now I wanna die. I'm like, come on, man. Like, is your image that fragile? Really? And that's it. We create all this stuff that it's like shields and shelter and hiding and like, for what? Because of judgment. Judgment for what? If we don't get it, somebody else is going to get it. So go get it, you know, and go be in places that you want to be. And just, you know, tap into where people are and show them where you are. And then those things will connect. And you do that and man, you just life will blow up. Like I am living my life now and I've never done that and I'm 50. I'm, I'm truly living the way I want to live. I'm still at home, right? I'm on this call right now. But I'm at home. I had family things to do. I have a whole bunch of work shit, but it'll get done. You know, I'm not sweating it. I'm not stressing it. It'll get done. Just remember, as long as you get your shit done, right? For those of you that had parents that are like, I don't care when you do it in the day. Just make sure it's all done by the end of the day. And you get it by the end of the day, then they don't care. They don't complain. And that's the way I'm living my life right now. It's like, I know I have a lot of different things to do, but nobody told me what time I have to get them done by. So I'll do them throughout the day as I see fit, but they'll get done and they'll be, they'll be done my way. And it, it, it takes a lot. It, it, it took a long time and a lot of uh, misery and failure and, you know, being drawn to an old way of living. It was hard to cut all that. But once I started freeing myself of it, oh my God, so liberating. And now I, I go kick ass. So I don't know if you can read my cup, right? I got 99 problems, but closing homes ain't one of them, right? And I sell houses in my sleep because of my relationship and working to be an expert in my field and being vulnerable and honest and connecting with people. But remember, I started with expert. Because I could be all of those other things and absolutely suck at real estate. And if I open my mouth and I'm like, <laughs> that probably, I should, <laughs> that was horrible advice. Then remember, we're going to turn off somebody who's needing our services if we're not a pro. So you have to work to be a pro. But at the same time, you also have to show the world and the people that you meet who you are. And that has to be attractive to them, right? So don't, don't be fake. But I'm not looking to work with a narcissist, right? So I hope none of you are narcissists. So just pay attention to where you're at and all this other stuff will, it, it'll all fall into place. I can't tell you when that's, that's you, that's your schedule, but I will tell you it will if you work on it consistently. So that's what I got for today, boys and girls. And uh, Katie, thank you so much for your share and pulling out. I got to end with this. Right. I got to end with this. I got to end with this because on Sit Squatch page, this page, he always ends with the journey begins with you. So something, so <laughs> the journey begins with you. So be good to yourself. All right. Yep. <laughs> so go kick ass. And, um, Camelia, if there's anything that you also want to work on that I can help you with or advise you on with where you're at in your real estate career. Again, I work to make myself available because you're important to me, even though you're still relatively a stranger to me, you're here. You're important to me. Your success is important to me. So I want to know where you're at and how I can help you, okay? I know you're on mute, but I read your lips. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love you. Okay. What's that? 
I said, okay, I'll, like I said, I just really started. So I'm trying to, I'm doing a lot of research right now. And I'm swaying if I should get me like a coach, like Tom Ferry or somebody to yeah. really walk me through the process. Because I heard what you say about making calls and I'm like, where do I get those numbers? Right. And, and like those that. are, I can help you with all that stuff. And Joe, Joe, if you want to reach out to Camelia and just help her go over some of the stuff and then we can connect, you and I, and then we'll go over some of those things that can point you in a direction, okay? Okay. So we'll do that right away. Okay, then. So, thanks, Mark. Absolutely. All right, guys. I do love you. Have an amazing weekend. Thank you very much. Bye. You're, you're welcome. I'll catch you all on Monday. Bye, and Monday. See you Monday. Bye, guys. <laughs>